Welcome. My name is Gina Timberman, and you are listening to Timber People, a podcast about people who, like Timber, are strong, build and create, who gather us together like fuel that feeds fire. People who support structures of our community that uplift and protect. I'm excited today to welcome my friends, uh, Rick Sennett and Brent Learned. We've known one another for many years. Rick, we've grown up together. We've mm-hmm. known each other since the 80s, growing up in Mustang. Mm-hmm. Brent, we've known each other since the 90s, uh, over, uh, you know, almost 30 years. Mm-hmm. Rick, over 30 years. And just to see the work that you're doing uh, individually, but now collectively and your creative collaborations. And I know we've talked about coming together uh, on the show, and I'm just so happy that you're here and that we can just um, talk about all the great things you're doing. Thanks, Gina. Yeah, thank you for having us. So I want to talk a little bit about uh, where you've each um, you know, been over the years in terms of your journey as artists and the inspirations that you have um, and influences, but also uh, where you are today. You're both brilliant artists in terms of how you express your, yourselves through your artwork, uh, your vibrant colors that you use, uh, your process. I know you have different, um, you know, different art forms, but they're um, just really it's exciting to, to know that um, that you come together and you share and make art accessible for people. And I love the ways in which you talk about art together, but also individually. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, for me, it's uh, it's really been a blessing. Uh, you know, from early on, it was it was known or, or suggested that I was going to uh, be an artist by my parents as, as I was a little kid. And I was always encouraged, uh, thankfully, to, to pursue creativity um, since I was you know, I, since I can remember. Uh, so, you know, to be able to, uh, to do what I do, uh, and to actually enjoy it, uh, again, like I said, it, it's just a great blessing and, uh, you know, and to have friends like you guys, um, you know, as time has gone on, I've, I've connected with a handful of people that really mean quite a, quite a great deal to me. And, and the two of you, Brent being one of those as, as, uh, means a great deal to me. And it's just, uh, I feel fortunate to, to be here right now. Absolutely. You know, we've talked about this before, Rick, is, you know, being you know, from Mustang and when uh, Bert Seaborn would come out and, mm-hmm. you know, interact with the ki- the kids mm-hmm. and um, it's, it's a cool memory. And, you know, we've talked about that and mm-hmm. To see, to know that, you know, that your friendships and um, and the way your art has evolved as you've left Oklahoma, going out to California, coming back and really exploring new, new ways of creating art is, is just really awesome. Yeah, it is. Yeah, thanks. It's, yeah, you know, uh, when Bert first came to Mustang, I was in sixth grade and I was 12 years old and he did a two-day demo. And uh, I knew at that point that I, I wanted to be like that guy. And, uh, yeah, like you said, to be able to foster a friendship with him uh, over the years and then to be able to work with him uh, towards the end there was just, man, what, a, what an amazing opportunity. Absolutely. You know, mentors are important. Um, you know, Brent, uh, you, you know, uh, you're Cheyenne Arapahoe. Uh, you have artists, longtime artists in your family. And I know that, um, you know, your artistic expression comes from, you know, native life ways and um, your Cheyenne Arapahoe identity. But uh, can you talk a little bit about your influences from family and um, how you started as a kid? Well, you know, I started as a kid uh, growing up watching my father sculpt because my father's a sculptor. My mother was the, uh, the first chairperson for the Cheyenne Arapaho. Uh, she was elected during the, uh, the 60s, and uh, she was way before William Mankiller. And uh, not only that, but she was elected four times to the, uh, to the council to, uh, to uh, guide our people. And so growing up, you know, watching mom doing what she was doing and dad and my, my younger sister, because I come from a family of 10. I, you know, yeah, before we, uh, I went to school, you know, we'd sit around and I'd watch my dad sculpt and he'd notice how I'd get to my, my crayons and start kind of drawing what he was doing. And he, he'd bring out books and the books that we had were, 
mainly on some of the uh, the great uh, Western artists like Remington, Russell, Scroll Weigel, Farney, and those guys. And so I grew up looking at those books. Not only that, but we also had other art books because I had brothers who were a lot older than I were that uh, were going to college. And so I would basically just kind of thumb through those books and get my inspiration. So I would sit there and I would imitate what I saw on paper. And then from there grew my love towards art. And so when I was old enough and after I'd graduated from high school, I went to the University of Kansas and uh, wanted to be a, a painter. And once I was at KU and I was getting ready to graduate in my last year of uh, school, you have to take a studio class. And uh, my uh, professor was Norma Jean. And he was saying, you need to look at these these artists. And so he gave me a couple artists to look at. One was uh, Fritz Schroeder. Uh, another one was um, AC Blue Eagle. And uh, one of the guys that he had taught when he was at KU was uh, Edgar Heaperbirds, who was a member of my tribe. He's Cheyenne. And uh, so I went to my mom right before I graduated, and I said, "Well, mom, I'm gonna I'm gonna paint our people." And so it made her happy. And she was, she goes, well, "You know, that would make me really proud." But I'm already proud of you since you're going to graduate. But I, that would make me especially proud for you to to tell the stories of our people and uh, and put it in a way to to give them a voice. You know, give my ancestors a voice since they really didn't have one since they were put on reservational life and all the, the trauma and tribulations that my tribe had gone through because I'm a descendant of the uh, Sand Creek Massacre and the uh, Battle of the Wachita, which happened here in Oklahoma. And so what I wanted to do was to, uh, to tell those stories and, and give them a voice. And so one of the things that I looked at when I looked at Indian artwork was how other artists were, were telling their stories. And one of the things that I that I saw were other artists from not from that tribe telling those stories and I'm thinking how could they do that because it's not their people you know if you're a, a Cheyenne or a, a Cherokee or a Kiowa or a Comanche no matter what tribe you are you, you have enough stories to draw from from your from your ancestors that you shouldn't have to take from another tribe and so I have always stuck on the straight and narrow of just telling the story of my people and and to tell their story. It's great. I love to know that, you know, it, there's that really interesting bridge between, you know, cray, like Crayolas and, you know, drawing and you know, as a kid and then knowing that, you know, some of your works are in the Smithsonian now and are in museums. And, you know, Rick, of you know, you first started, you know, creating these really dynamic designs and very vibrant designs that um, we identify them, very large structures around our state, um, small and large structures. And um, that, that bridge there of placemaking and identity, I know when I see each, you know, each of your work, I love, I love that I have some pieces in my home, like even small, there's, there's beloved to me because I, you know, that's, that's the identity and, um, and it represents your talent and experience and expression, but also friendship. And, um, uh, I want to talk a little bit about the sense of placemaking. It's, you know, talking about where your people are from and that your ancestors speak through your work and the experience and journey that you've been on, Rick, and that going, you know, to other cities and being like, I know that, I know that work and, you know, and I know and going to a museum and seeing that, um, what does that mean to you to create a sense of place, placemaking and identity? You know, for me, it's something that it really has come to mean quite a bit. It didn't mean so much to me when I was younger, but I, my dad, uh, when I was 14, I can remember clearly he, you know, as I, as I was adamant about pursuing a, an art of, or a life of art, he, he pulled me to the side and he said, son, there's, there's three things I want you to know if you're going to, if you're going to, you know, pursue art as a career um, or anything for that matter. Um, he said, one, uh, always do a good job no matter what, no matter who it's for or what it's for, always do a good job. Two, uh, have a definable style, something that maybe somebody doesn't know who it was or what it was that created it, but they know they've seen something like it before. And three, and most importantly, stick with it for a minimum of 20 years. Wow. And so now as I look back, you know, um, I, I, I have uh, created this definable style, and many times uh, people will see me painting or see a piece of my art or something and they'll say sometimes they pull their phone out or you know it's just a, so many random weird experiences where they 
somebody's taken a picture, they've sent it to them or something. And they'd like, they, they ask, did you do this? This looks like your work. And it, and it, and it, it, it has been my work quite often. So, you know, I think, uh, you know, there's something about sticking with it, uh, for a long time. Um, I think that's true with anything that we do. Um, you know, uh, and, and then, like I said, have a definable style and, and none of that was intentional, mm -hmm. uh, but it, it came to be just from being at it for so long. And so now to see these connections that are being made in so many different ways, uh, it, again, it's just one of those things that you, you know, when I was younger, I really wanted to have an impact, but I didn't know how to make that impact or what that would even meant to be mm -hmm. honest. I knew I wanted to do something, but now to see that it's coming together like that, and and really it's less about me and more about the connections that are being made, right? Uh, through right. this experience, you know, right? Um, art is meant to educate and create awareness, but also to connect people, and you know, I know that with process, you've had a, you know some really great. Um, like the recording of that process, I know with OETA mm -hmm. in the past, and um, and Brent, you know, it's really interesting that, you know, through your studies and through relationships you have, and you know, the process that um, you go through. I know that you both can turn out art so rapidly. And um, do you have a typical process, or do you have a um, in terms of a vision that you have and and then going to, you know, sit down and articulate that. Is there a, a certain um, process that you go through that um, really defines who you are as an artist? Oh, you know, uh, one of the things I think about when I do my art is this one, I'm very proud to be from Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. And so just like what Rick was mm -hmm. saying, you know, no matter where we go, we still have that Oklahoma mm -hmm. tie. And uh, just like Rick as well, you know, my father, he, he pulled me to the side and he goes, you know, I was a, an artist uh, for over 40, 40 some odd years. And, and I was telling him I wanted to go to school at KU to, to go into art. And he said, well, just remember these, these three things. One, when you go out, you know, you're going out with that last name, Leonard. And so right. you need to be proud of that because that's your last name and that's your reputation. And two, you need to be honest and upfront and, and not only that, but try to help others, mm -hmm. you know, because when you help others, it helps you and everyone else in the community mm -hmm. bring themselves up. And then the third was uh, to keep Will Smith's wife's name out of the goddamn <laughs> mouth. And so those those things stuck with me. Yeah. And uh, but when I do my process, I, I try to try to incorporate the, the the meaning of what it is like to, to have grown up here in Oklahoma and, and basically mm -hmm. kind of tell the Oklahoma story. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I know, Rick, you use different Oklahoma symbols mm -hmm. often mm -hmm. um, in your work and that identity of Oklahoma. And I, I say this a lot, Oklahoma, you know, was and is a collision of cultures. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're from Oklahoma, you have a, your family has a really interesting story to tell. And today we can be a collaboration of cultures. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I know like we've talked about, you know, the work that you do individually, but how collaborations can come together, particularly with possibly a show or we've talked about this in relationship to the Paseo district. Mm -hmm. And um, how are I love that um, you're creating art on your ter your terms, but that also means on your terms that you can collaborate and connect and share with one another to create a unique experience for everyone. Mm -hmm. What are some what are some ways that you're working together? You know, I think it's uh, I, I really I really think it's important to collaborate, uh, right. and especially in a way that uh, would bring two unassuming you know groups together. Uh, but you know, with Brent, it's I've always admired Brent and and can relate with him in so many ways, just as as an artist and the way that he produces uh, his style. Um, his attitude as an artist, uh, his demeanor and all that. And he and I, I feel like, have always gotten along well. And and uh, we've collaborated in, in many ways, I think, outside of visual art, just in conversation. Right. Uh, you know, kind of projecting or dreaming, I guess you could call it in a way. But, but um, you know, this recent work that we've done together uh, where he's, you know, we, we've embellished each other's work uh, with, mm -hmm. with our own images. It's, it's just, it feels good. It feels right. right. And it feels natural. And, you know, I think when you do things like that and it just happens, there's an organic uh, component to it that it, it's real. And so it's just fun. 
you know, and it's, uh, and, and like, like, uh, you were saying, you know, it gives me Brent, uh, like you were saying, it's, it, you know, I've, I've got a tremendous amount of pride for the state of which I'm, mm-hmm. I'm born and raised in a uh, tremendous amount. I love this state. I couldn't imagine at this stage of my career being in any other uh, state as an artist. Right. Um, this is where it's at for me. Uh, and I've known this ever since I was a kid, even, even when I took off to California, but, but to be here and, uh, to be working with, uh, people like you and, and people like Brent and it's, uh, it just, it's adding content, uh, to something that, you know, that, that, uh, is good. Mm-hmm. And I've, I've noticed over uh, the course of the many years after graduating from college and moving back to Oklahoma, how the art community is, has really grown here. Mm-hmm. And in the, you know, a lot of the artists have state pride in how they want to, to showcase their work and how they want to describe themselves as a, an Oklahoma artist. And, you know, one of the things I appreciate about uh, Rick's work is, is how he really has a lot of symbolism of Oklahoma in his work mm-hmm. and same with, same with mine. Mm-hmm. And so, and one of the things, you know, working with him and doing a, some collaborations is, is I saw his work and I was like, Hey man, I would love to do a, a collaboration with you because as an artist, I, you know, I have a gift that I, I want to share with the world because once I'm gone, from this world, you know, it's kind of cool to know that I'll have some of me, um, in places that mm-hmm. I'll never go, go, going to, uh, going over overseas and going to South America and everything else. And, you know, it's kind of wild to, to know where those pieces will, cause they're an extension of you. They're like little kids who, who are traveling the world and going to places that you'll, you'll never go, which is a, a really cool experience. Is uh, mm-hmm. that's one of the cool things about being an artist. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I like to think of it, I've said this before, but it's, you know, when I go somewhere and I see, you know, one of my friends, you know, works of art, it's like having a visual handshake with my friend. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That, that, that extension, as you mentioned. Um, I love that today there's this renaissance happening in Oklahoma. It's been going on for a long time, but we have more than festivals to showcase, mm-hmm. you know, Oklahoma and our Oklahoman artwork, um, native and non-native alike. But now we have new museums and we have, I think there's an environment that supports the artists Mm -hmm. um, now more than ever before in Oklahoma. Yeah. You know, when I was a kid, of course, right, you know, right out of school, I, high school, I thought, man, I, I need to leave like most kids do. And I took off to San Francisco and the Bay Area, Berkeley and everything. And, and, but I left here knowing that there was something going on here. Uh, Mm -hmm. and when I came back, you know, I came back strategically because I knew that there was something going on here, but you know, it's, it's because I grew up in Mustang, Oklahoma, Mm -hmm. you know, I was raised by a seemingly conservative family, but yet my style has been come, uh, been, been known or or called psychedelic. Right. (laughs) So, you know, it's neat that I can be in Oklahoma and create psychedelic art for lack of better terms, uh, and and make a living at it mm-hmm. uh, here in Oklahoma, and I know that I could I can do that more here than I could in San Francisco or New York. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you know that tells me that there is some kind of major renaissance occurring right here in this. You know, I, I, I think it's likely that Oklahoma is the epicenter of a renaissance that's occurring. Absolutely, absolutely. Rick, I know you've had uh, art for the people mm-hmm. for some time and unique ways of delivering art artwork. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, you know, again, that took me back to San Francisco uh, when I was a kid. I was probably 20 or so, and I would sell art for a dollar a copy on Upper Haight Street, black and white prints. And, um, you know, and, and after I did that for a while, again, I was looking for, I was searching for my passion. I wanted to have an impact on humanity, you know, mm-hmm. like kids do. And, and, um, so I found that once I made the amount of money that I needed to make for the week, I decided that, you know, I'm going to put a mission statement on the back of these pieces of art. And at, at the point that I make the amount of money that I need to make for the week, I'm then going to give art away for free, mm-hmm. standing in the same place on Upper Haight Street. And I'd go to Fisherman's War for places like that too. And, and, um, and so I, I had this mission statement that was a heartfelt mission statement, as heartfelt as it could be at 20. And uh, I had the return address to my mother's house in Mustang, Oklahoma, if people wanted to respond, 
in any way, shape, or form. And uh, the response was just phenomenal. A flood of mail came in from people from all over the world. I didn't realize that the Bay Area was an international gathering spot. Right, right. Uh, So there were people from all over that sent all kinds of letters and stuff. And that that really fed the soul for the first time. And I felt like this is why I've been put here. Right. Um, This is my purpose. Outside of making a living, I knew that there was something about this that I had to do. And it was a mission. And so I've been at that ever since. And now what I do is I, you know, on occasion and quite often here lately, I'll, uh, because of social media, it makes it much easier to do so. I'll, I'll, I'll do what I call an art drop. Right, right. And I leave a piece of art, usually in front of a museum or a gallery or a place of business that I like or support. And I post a little video of exactly where that is. I and, love seeing that. And who can go get it. And, uh, and you know, that's been such a fun experience. Uh you know, I, I, I wish that I could give every piece of art away for free because the, the feeling that I get from it is, uh, uh, I mean, it's it's invaluable to me. That's so incredible. You know, talking about bringing people together, uh, some of the, you know, our best times when I'm with you, Brent, is seeing with you seeing you out at an Indian market and, um, and, and just uh, all connecting and you know, being in Oklahoma, but also going outside of the state. And I just have this sense of pride when I'm somewhere. I'm like, oh, these are my friends and look at what they're doing and seeing you with all of your artwork, you know, in your booth and, you know, trying to track everybody down and, and everyone coming together and having fun and sharing and just having a great time. And I know you work so hard out at Indian Market. Um yeah, how long, how many years have you been doing market now? Uh, I've been going since uh, ninety four. Mm-hmm. Uh, graduated from KU in ninety three, so I've been going since ninety four. Uh, there are a few few times I missed because I had prior engagements. Uh, but a few years ago, I had, did a project with the, the University of Oklahoma, and uh, and it was an out a, a, a cross cultural exchange program with Russia where we worked with the, the indigenous people of, uh, of Siberia called the Barat. Mm-hmm. And uh, one of the things that we did, were, where I did, was I, I interviewed 25 different artists and, and uh, people who uh, are uh, American Indian and asked them just basic questions. And one of the things that we wanted to get from this is to how vital uh, to teach uh, about American Indians in school. Right. And one of the things is, is from that... Uh, from those interviews, I did 25 of them. And out of 25 interviews I did, only three people could literally talk about their about their tribe, hmm. which, you know, is it's kind of bad. But then again, it shows that not only that people need to, to learn about where they came from, but it's also we need to teach dominant society about American Indians and, and how sensitive some of the regalia and, and things that we wear and how, how special they mean to us. And when I went over to uh, Siberia, it was kind of wild to see how they related so much to the American Indian on how they buried and even their music and everything. I could literally relate to them because they actually had a story about how half their tribe left and went eastward to, uh, to hunt the bison. And never came back. So it kind of goes to the theory that they came over on the on the, the Bering right. Strait. And then the other project that I did was I, I did an art residency in uh, Canberra, Australia, and I did a collaboration with a, an Aboriginal artist, Marion Amp. And uh, it was just so cool to, to be in another country, to experience their culture mm-hmm. and their heritage and relate on a, on, on a, on a way to where we, we both knew each other, even though the body of water separated us. Right. But, the, but the stories were still the same on how all these atrocities came in and, and, and the, the tribulation that happened to our people, but yet we're still here. And one of the things I try to relate to to younger artists is that, hey, you're an ambassador of your tribe. Right. You're, you need to educate dominant society of who you are. But if you don't know who you are and where you came from and tell those stories— how can how can you how can you relate to them? How can you get that story out there? And so I always tell them, hey, do what I did. Just read books. There's tons of books about your tribe. You know, read read up about them. You know, a few years ago, I did a project with my cousin, and it was about the Sand Creek Massacre. Mm-hmm. And that the exhibition traveled from Denver, Colorado, to um, Evanston, uh, Illinois, where 
uh, Northwestern University is because John Evans, who, is a, who had a hand in Santa Creek, uh, founded both those universities. And so, again, with me, it's, it's, a, it's about education and, and about sharing. Because if I can see a, a teachable moment to where somebody can learn something, that's why, what it's about for me. And again, when it comes to collaboration, especially with Rick and other artists, it's, it's about sharing and, and giving that gift of art. Because as, a, as an artist, I look at art as a, another form of a communication mm -hmm. that can tear down boundaries and uh, communicate with others. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I, I really identify with, you know, that feeling of going overseas. And, you know, I was hosted in Japan by the Ainu people for a conference that I attended. And... Uh, just to be welcomed, but also uh, share with indigenous people in other areas of the world um, and people who that you connect to and see those commonalities. It's so important. It's so important. Uh, and it's just an, it's an incredible experience. So uh, one thing we also have in common, we're both Chiefs fans. Yeah. <laughs> we're Chiefs fans. And you talk about having those moments, those teachable moments where, you know, you, people are all together, but you can educate uh, on culture and um, and respect culture and um, and share that ways uh, to really understand culture so that it's not disrespected. So, you know, one thing that we really focused on is engaging tribes at the Chiefs games, uh, you know, one day a year uh, for about five years, um, we participated in this experience. Uh, and I want to thank you for your support with this is engaging, you know, the tribes who had a historic connection to that land around the Chiefs, Chiefs kingdom. And we for one day, we had an experience uh, whereby we, you know, shared cultural aspects about the drum um, about um, what it means when people put those, you know, war bonnets on mm -hmm. um, and, and why that is an issue um, and paint their faces. And we gave out educational material. We had the Chickasaw Children's Choir and, you know, my friend Tabitha Fair out to sing the national anthem and, you know, to see over 100 Native people gather together just to be together for a game experience. And, um, you know, we had Native veterans and the Honor Color Guards with us and, you know, traditional people to to sing and to share and to for one day to have that kind of platform to educate others and so that we could build relationships that share that, you know, connect the community. It's like those chief's pillars of yeah. connecting community, respect. Um, we have a responsibility for that. And just like you said, and Rick, it's like, you know, what your father taught you mm -hmm. and, you, you know, with your children, we all have a responsibility mm -hmm. to educate on those human values that really resonate with mm -hmm. all of us. And so those are some good memories. Those are some well, really great you know, memories. One of the things about that was it was a way to educate dominant society because, for one, a lot of these schools don't teach about American right. Indians. And so when you when you're when you're brought up and you're you don't know what's right and wrong and when but when somebody comes along and says, Hey, what you're doing is not not right, this is a respectful way to do it. This is what you should do. And you know, trying to get rid of mascots and all that stuff, I, th I think that's just a form of manifest destiny. You know, what isn't it what isn't it for us when you get rid of this stuff, you know, because one of the things about manifest destiny among Indians is when you hear that and it resonates that, hey, you know, kill the Indian, save the man. And, you know, you saw the, the memes that floated around about the uh, land of old lakes. So, well, they got rid of the Indian, but they kept the land. Well, see, again, it just it's about educating, educating dominant society about what's right and what's wrong. But as a as an American Indian, as a Cheyenne Arapaho, I'm proud of the of the Kansas City Chief logo. It doesn't offend me. And again, you know, we're in this time in history to where things will, you know, you got the cancel culture who want to get rid of something because it offends them. And again, I look at a, a situation and go, hey, this is a teachable moment. We can educate dominant society mm -hmm. and say, hey, this is this is the reason why we should keep it, because again, my ancestors they would be proud of that imagery. I'm proud of that imagery. I stand up for it, and and again, it's 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 a way to to educate people. And again, that's that's one of the things that I, I try to to uh, strive in in my work and and as an individual. And um, going back on, you know, when my my dad first moved to Oklahoma, he uh, he was approached to be one of the first founding members of the uh, Cowboy Artists of America, and. Uh, 
he looked at it as a way of, no, I, I don't want to join that. You know, he had Fippen over at the house and George Fippen was like, John, you sure you don't want to join? And dad goes, no, I, I don't believe in that. I believe in competition. It's where, you know, the cream of the crop will rise to the top. And, and to have an organization like that, you're excluding others. Mm-hmm. And so I, I don't, I, I don't, I'm kind of like my dad. I don't like to join any groups. I don't try to run with any cliques and, um, you know, just being an artist and being myself, I, I always try to stay true to that because I, you know, I even noticed here in Oklahoma, not to bag on it if I did, was that, you know, there is still little cliques in the art community that when they see you out doing something, they, they'll they say something behind your back but when you're where they're, when they see you in person, they'll, they'll, they'll be nice. It's just like anybody else. And, you know, it's like my girlfriend was telling me, she goes, hey, anytime somebody's bagging on you, that they're hating on you. Mm-hmm. And when you when you start having haters is when you when you've arrived. <laughs> right. <laughs> so that's how I look at mm-hmm. it. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know, I love, you know, that one that one of the great exper- memories of the being at the Chiefs and you know, we had the Chiefs ran the players ran through that tunnel of, you know, over 30 sovereign flags. Like oh, yeah. These tribes are still here. And that was a lot of hard work putting it together and, you know, appreciate um, you being up there to support us and everything. I'll tell you what, just like seeing those those sovereign flags um, and, and knowing that uh, – we have halftime reads and the other, you know, break reads to ta- say what what we can about respecting Native culture. It was really important. And so those are, are really good memories. And I think taking those moments, we have to take those moments um, to share. And so I really appreciate um, you both being on the show. And I know you have websites to, that promote your artwork and, you know, your Mothman <laughs> Studios. Um can you say for the audience your websites if they want to check out your work or learn well, I, more about? I, uh, um, yeah, I primarily use Instagram as the, the right. primary uh, platform, and mine is uh, Mothman M O T H M A N three 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 Mothman three three three. Awesome. And I, I mainly use my uh, Instagram and Facebook art page. Uh, Instagram is at Brent Learner, B R E N T L E A R N E D. Just combine. On Instagram and on, on uh, Facebook, it's just Brent Learned Art. So you can you can check out my art and you can check out uh, Rick's on his Instagram. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Thank you both, my dear friends, for being with me today and for sharing with the audience. And I can't wait to see all of the beautiful work that you'll continue to produce, no doubt. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jenna. Again, thank you for having us. Thank you. Yakoki, thank you for joining us. Timber People is brought to you by the Possibilities Podcast Platform.